Hi everyone! In this lesson, we will go over how to find the greatest common factor of a group of numbers using the division method. First of all, GCF stands for the biggest number that can be divided by two or more numbers. So in the example below, we will look for the GCF of 44 and 64. The first thing you should do is write the two numbers side by side and then try to look for a common factor that can go into both numbers. In this case, 2 goes into both 44 and 64, bringing them down to 22 and 32. Notice how 22 and 32 still shares a common factor, which is 2 again, and 22 divided by 2 gives you 11, 32 divided by 2 gives you 16, and you are done right there because 11 and 16 are relatively prime. Since GCF stands for the greatest common factor, you will combine the common factors on the side together to get the biggest. Which in this case, the GCF will be 2 times 2, 4. Again, just like the LCM example, it does not matter how you begin the question as long as you are dividing them by a common factor. So notice how 44 and 64 can also be divided by 4 directly, so you can begin with 4, which brings 44 down to 11, and 64 down to 16 right away. And again, 16 and 11 are relatively prime, leaving you 4 as the GCF right away. To recap, the first thing you should do is to look for a factor that can be divided by both numbers. You will continue until the two numbers are relatively prime. And since GCF stands for the greatest common factor, you will multiply the common factors on the left side together to get the biggest. Now what if you have three or more numbers? How does the division method help? In the example below, we will look for the GCF of 12, 20, and 36. Just like the previous example, you should begin by writing the three numbers side by side and then look for a common factor that goes into all of them, which in this case, 4. 12 divided by 4 brings it down to 3. 20 divided by 4 gives you 5. 36 divided by 4 gives you 9. Notice how they're relatively prime. You stop there. Unlike the example in the LCM, even though 3 and 9 shares a common factor, we don't continue because in this case, you're looking for the GCF of 3 numbers. So a common factor amongst 2 does not matter. Once again, you can redo this problem with a different common factor that you start off with. So notice how you can begin with 2, which brings 12 down to 6, 20 down to 10, and 36 down to 18. Since they still share a common factor, you continue dividing it by 2, brings it down to 3, 5, and 9. And again, you stop there because the number set together is relatively prime. The GCF is 4 in either case. To recap, the first thing you should do is to look for a common factor that goes into all numbers. And you will start when there's no more common factor amongst all numbers. To get the greatest common factor, you combine the common factors on the left side together to get the biggest. Once again, the key to remember is that you're factoring out of all numbers. So you start when there's no more common factor amongst all numbers. Now. What if numbers are relatively prime? How does that help you to get the GCF? To recap, relatively prime means that numbers do not share any common factors besides 1. So an example I can show you is 14 and 15. Notice if you want to factor anything out of 14 and 15, the only number that can be divided by both is 1. And guess what? 1 will be the GCF. Another example with three numbers can be 14, 16, and 17. Notice how there's no common factor amongst all three numbers besides 1. So the only thing you can factor out of the three is 1. 
Guess what? Whenever a group of numbers are relatively prime, their GCF will always be one. One more time. One will be the GCF when a group of numbers are relatively prime. So that's why it pays to make sure you know that numbers are relatively prime or not. That's it for the lesson.